Bengals Ravens, what a thriller this one was. The Baltimore Ravens end up winning this game by one point, 35 to 34. Let's take a look at the top five graded Baltimore Ravens in this game. Uh, defense tackle Namdi Matabuike with a 89.5 at the very top of the list. Safety. Kyle Hamilton with an 86.7. Center Tyler Linderbaum with a 79.8. Guard Patrick McCarry with a 72.5. He's playing well since getting kicked inside the guard. Defensive tackle Travis Jones playing well this season. Here's the number five on this list with a 72.0. And then Lamar Jackson an 87.8 on Cincinnati's side of things. Jamar Chase, number one. How could he not be? <laughs> with an 82 or an 88.2 overall grade. Yeah, edge rusher Trey Henderson is 75.5. Tight end Tanner Hudson with a 71.0. Edge rusher Sam Hubbard a 61.9. And offensive tackle Marius Mims with a similar 61.9. Joe Burrow in this game a 68.1. Uh, Dalton, I, I, I kind of want to start here because this is something that I've, I've been looking forward to talking about uh, really since that Thursday, knowing that I was going to put it in the show. Ravens offense on the run, I think, is the stat that told the story here. And I think it's a stat that I, I really just more want to sort of shine a light on it in what I've seen so far this season with Lamar because we've talked about Lamar Jackson and how he's having an even better season than he was last year when he won MVP, and I really do believe that. Ravens offense when Lamar scrambles, okay? That's where I really want to focus because this year he seems – more unstoppable on the run outside of the tackles than he's ever been in his NFL career. And the numbers actually do prove that. So when he scrambles this year, the Ravens' EPA per play, so it could be a run from Lamar, he could take off and scramble and run, or he could take off and scramble and still pass. Their EPA per play, 0.404, number one in the NFL in those situations for any quarterback. Last year, okay, remember I told you that he's better than he was last year? Last year it was 0.185. This year it's a 0.404. It's more than double better this year with how Lamar is navigating those situations. They are, this game in particular against Cincinnati, it was a 0.765. It's insane. Those are I know some people might be listening to me and they're just like, okay, what are these numbers? They don't mean. Trust me, this is nuts. It is nuts how good Lamar is when he is getting out of the pocket and when he is scrambling. I, I gave you context to say that that 0.404 is the number one number in the NFL when it comes to EPA per play for quarterbacks that are operating when they are scrambling. And against Cincinnati, he had almost double that. That's how unstoppable this guy was. He's been unbelievable when he's been on the run. And when we talk about him being more efficient, that's really where I see his game being more efficient. He is still as explosive, but what he is as a weapon, when he leaves the pocket, he truly feels unstoppable. And those EPA per play numbers back that up. It's an insane clip. And it's crazy that we're talking about this guy playing better this year than he was last year, a year after winning some MVP hardware. So to me, that was the big time stat that told the story because after seeing that against the Bengals, I was able to sort of encapsulate exactly what we slash I have been talking about this year with him being even better. And it is his play on the run that I think he has just taken to a uh, truly, truly elite level this season. I think it's due in no small part to the fact that this is the best year he's had as a passer. No, absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely. Just, look, he's got 24 touchdowns passing this year. He had 24 in the regular season last year. He's already matched it in 10 games. I mean, this is – no, he's the hardest – you can debate best quarterback in Mahomes and all that stuff. He's the hardest player to defend in the NFL. There is – what's the answer? Praise off? Yes. Outscore him? Yes. I mean, the, I know – Every single possession that the Ravens punt – I go, wow, they got lucky. I think we've hit the point where even if you hold them to a field goal, sure, where you you just you're it's gonna be it's gonna get to be a requirement. I know. Look, they've lost three games because of their defense, and that's gonna continue to be a problem. But I think we've hit that point, and this is where we were with the Chiefs and Tyreek Hill when they still had him. Was well, if you hold them to three, that's a win. Whatever, just don't let them get a touchdown every single drive, right? And I think I think we've hit that point with Lamar. I mean, it's it's. Um, I, I don't know what the answer is. And if, I think, aren't they, are they playing Pittsburgh this week? We got some big games coming this week. I'm pretty sure they're playing so. Pittsburgh this week. Uh, what about you? What's the uh, stat that told the story? On the opposite end of that, yeah, they're playing, they're going to Pittsburgh this week. Oh, boy. Um, on the opposite end of that, 
the Bengals, look, they pressured Jackson on 13 out of 36 dropbacks, which isn't terrible, but they couldn't get him down. It just felt like every every single time they had a chance to get him down, they couldn't, right? You have to finish him off. Zero sacks and only one hit. And, you know, this is a theme throughout the team. Trey Hendrickson was the only player with at least a 60 pass rush grade. And he had Ooh, maybe a, that's not good. he had like a 70 something, I don't remember 73 or something like that. I don't yeah. remember off the top of my head right now, but I mean, it speaks to the theme with the entire team where the Bengals right now are three absolute superstars and a bunch of other guys not getting it done. Yep. I mean, that's and on defense that's uh, look, and I and I don't, you know, I'm not even going to I'm that's just kind of echoing honestly Joe Burrow said it himself. He's like with the way that me and Jamar and Trey are playing you wouldn't think we would be a four and six team, and this is uh, look. Football is not just three guys; it's it's eleven guys on the field at a time. It's fifty-three man rosters. It takes even more than that to contribute. And the Bengals right now have three guys getting the job done. Uh, our most impressives are sort of the same. Mine is just the Burrow and Chase connection. Yours is Jamar Chase. You know, Jamar Chase in this game: seventeen targets, eleven receptions, two hundred sixty-four <laughs> receiving yards, and three touchdowns. It's just. Just absolutely insane the connection that they have. I saw somebody in the chat talking about like how does Joe Burrow throw for over 400 yards? He's got four touchdowns and he's got a PFF grade uh, around 70. Well, we have him logged with three big time throws, also three turnover worthy plays in this game. They just didn't pay for it. They weren't interceptions, but he had the three turnover worthy plays in this game and uh, he had an adjusted completion percentage below 70. percent So anytime that's the case, yeah, it's going to bring down the numbers. Even if you have a lot of big time throws and a lot of production, um, that's why PFF exists because we're trying to look at every single play but they remain the most impressive because of just that incredible connection I mean what was the second to last drive that they had where it was sort of like a do or die like they got to have it first play of the drive up drop back boom there it is Jamar Chase touchdown like monster touchdown it's like come on like everybody knows he's just throwing it to Jamar Chase and yet he still gets the football the throw the throw on the last touchdown too is ridiculous yeah i mean mean, they they just the connection that these two have had all going all the way back to the lsu days um it's just one of the best wide receiver quarterback connections that we have seen over the last decade and it's been so much fun to watch and they remain unbelievably impressive and those two tried to will this team to win the football game and unfortunately you're one point short or should i say one throw short with a two-point conversion that could have won them the game right there but um that's disappointing. And because we get into my most disappointing, it's it's the Bengals' pass blocking. 30 pressures allowed in this game? Holy crap. 50.1 pass blocking grade as a team? Like, it's just not good enough. It's just not going to be good enough. It really was, I thought you put it beautifully, Trey Hendrickson, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, trying to will the rest of this 53-man roster into victory. And um, they came up one point short. That's all there is to it. I think, did I see Did I see someone mention Chase is the first player ever with two games with 260 yards? I think I saw a stat like that. I believe and he's, that. And he's leading the whole triple crown race right now for receivers. He's got the most catches. He's got 150 more receiving yards than anybody else, and he's the first one to 10 touchdowns this season. So, I mean, he, he might be having an all-time great kind of year. And um, – it just the the rest of it is so that's my most disappointing is just anyone not named those three guys because they're, they're just killing it right now i mean you've got joe burrow you could argue he's having his best year he's uh, he, he is said, having he, an mvp I mean, caliber he said season. he said it himself it feels like there's like five quarterbacks that are having mvp caliber I mean, seasons and, and, but yeah I he's mean, one of them he's he's one i mean he's second he's second behind lamar in overall and passing grade mm-hmm. he's got the same number of touchdowns it's at, at a certain point i go what else i don't know that i've ever seen a quarterback having such a good season and the rest of the team and being this bad and being under 500 yeah that's i mean a this question. this goes back to like the drew Brees days when they were seven and nine because they had no defense whatsoever mm-hmm. and Brees was throwing for five thousand yards and going seven and nine i mean this is this is where we're at with the Bengals and Look, again, if T. Higgins gets healthy, they're only one game behind Denver for a playoff spot. Huge game with the Chargers this week. Um, I, I don't know that they match up real great with the Chargers right now with the way the Chargers, you know, at least want to run the ball and they don't give up that many explosives. But the Bengals, in theory, if you were to win this game and maybe even the next game against Pittsburgh, you're right in it. You could be that last team in and be really dangerous. But it's hard to win with three or maybe four guys every week, and that's all you have thanks for watching everybody make sure you like and subscribe the video and if you don't have a pff plus subscription you can get one to see all the premium stats that we talked about here on the show plus the expert betting and fantasy advice over at subscribe.pff.com the description is also right below so if you are not a pff plus subscriber you can come on today